I'm meteorologist Taylor Canoost with your local 5 weather lab. On the thunderstorm spectrum, supercells are the least common, but the most likely to produce severe weather. So let's take a closer look at what makes these storms so new unique. Now the main part of a supercell is the towering cumulonimbus cloud. That is the main part of this storm. The clouds will stop growing vertically once they reach what is called the equilibrium level, and that's the point in the atmosphere when the rising parcel of air reaches the same temperature as its surrounding environment. Sometimes, though, these clouds rise so quickly that they punch through that equilibrium level, leading to a dome like top that's called the overshooting top. Now, the anvil of the storm is when the cumulonimbus cloud fans out along that equilibrium level. Now at the low levels of this storm, you'll find the flanking line, which is a row of cumulus clouds found on the backside of a supercell. On the front of the storm is the shelf cloud, and that's typically associated with a rush of cool, gusty air. The wall cloud is a lowering found below the base of the supercell, and when these rotate, they may create a tornado. Now there are numerous mechanisms going on within a supercell that make it different from typical thunderstorms. By definition, a supercell is a thunderstorm that contains a rotating updraft known as a mesocyclone, and that stretches all the way from the bottom of the storm to the top, where you will find the wall cloud and the tornado is at the base of that mesocyclone. So all of this rotation is associated with, its, uh, with each other, including the tornado that uh, is obviously all the way down to the ground. Now, uh, meanwhile, to keep this mesocyclone going, uh, what makes it persist is continuously fed warm, moist air. This green here, as long as that continues to feed into the mesocyclone, it will maintain its strength. Now, when heavy rain falls, it creates an area of cool air called the forward flank downdraft, and that can lead to that cool rush of air near the shelf cloud that I mentioned earlier. On the backside of this storm is called a rear flank downdraft, which tends to be on the drier side of things, but it actually plays a key role in tornado development. So there's a bunch of different mechanisms associated with uh, the tornado development, but uh, it's all very complex and it's all very specific to supercells. Here's what a supercell looks like on radar. Typically, you obviously have the heavy rainfall here in the red and the oranges, and then you have that classic hook shape on the backside over there that we often see with tornadic thunderstorms, and that's often a, a trigger for tornado warnings for meteorologists. It's actually that rear flank downdraft that I mentioned that creates this hook feature on the radar. That dry air wrapping around the mesocyclone creates the area of rotation. Usually the tornado will be located right around there. Meanwhile, on the front side of the system, you have the forward flank drown, downdraft, which pushes that cool air ahead of the heavy rain fall. So you have cool air over here in flow feeding into that mesocyclone and the dry cool air on the backside of the system as well. Supercells again, very complicated, not terribly common, but when they do come to your neighborhood, they can produce all types of severe weather, including tornadoes. With your local five weather lab, I'm meteorologist Taylor Knust.